Hey guys, welcome to the walkthrough video of my Pro 5 Collection Volume 1. Obviously this is a sample library of my Profit 5 keyboard, which is sitting to the left of me. Um, you're looking at the main stage version, but it does come in a bunch of different formats, including a contact version. So for the contact version, you need to own contact 5 or higher. It does not work in the free version of contact, so it won't work in the contact player. You need to own at least contact 5 or higher. Um, it uses the same sound sources as the other versions, um, but obviously it's in a contact format. So loads up like that. Um, but I'm going to do a separate um, contact uh, kind of walkthrough video and install video. So I'm going to focus on it in the main stage version for now. Um, but that's just a quick kind of little look at what it looks like in contact. So for those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Peter James. I'm a producer, sound designer, especially um, a keyboard player, and I've had my sounds actually feature on a bunch of different TV programs and movies, including The Walking Dead, The Purge, uh, The Bachelorette. I know, that's a funny one, one of my uh, proudest moments, um, as well as a bunch of other different movies and TV programs. I'm on the beta testing team for Spectrasonics, so I've got a bunch of my presets um, in Spectrasonics Omnisphere 2 as uh, factory presets. Um, so that's what I do. I design sounds, uh, I make sample libraries, and this is my latest one. Um, the Prophet 5 sitting to the left of me, I love this keyboard. The raw tone of this thing is amazing. Um, so obviously when I got it, I had to uh, design a bunch of sounds and do a sample library of it. Um, we're going to work on a bunch of other different formats too. So like I was saying, main stage, um, this is the main stage version. There's a logic version that partners with this one. There's also a stage ready version if you're uh, a multi-track stage ready template user. Um, it comes in that format. I'm going to look at getting it into a Nord format for all you Nord um, owners, um, as well as an Ableton format. But for now, um, at the time of this video, um, it's main stage, logic, and contact five or higher. Okay, let's get on to audio examples. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to A, B the real Profit 5, which is sitting next to me. I've got it routed through my classic API straight into my Apollo Twin. Um, and just show you the difference, because I know a lot of you are probably going, well, what's the difference in sound between the sample library and the actual keyboard? Um, so I'm going to quickly do that, um, a quick AB of those two, and then just go through and show you a bunch of these audio examples. I'm not going to cover every single patch, because all the audio examples are already up on multi-tracks. Um, but if you're looking for what the product looks like, this is the product image, and it'll be... Um, Actually, it is on multi-tracks. By the time uh, you see this video, um, it'll be released on multi-tracks. Uh, the Prophet 5 is a mono keyboard, so when you're using it live, the only way to get it stereo is um, put stereo effects on it, like a ping pong delay or a stereo reverb or chorus or something like that uh, to make it stereo. Uh, but the advantage of having a Prophet 5 in the studio and it being MIDI compatible is you can double track it. Um, and because it's analog, you can double track it and each take is slightly different. And so you can take those two takes, pan them left and right, and you've got a um, stereo version of the Prophet 5. Um, so that's actually what I've done in the sample library. I've sampled every sound twice, um, essentially double sampling it or double tracking it. So you can get a big wide stereo version of this mono keyboard. Um, so when I'm doing an A-B comparison, I can't compare the mono version with a stereo because that's kind of unfair. I'm going to compare the mono version with a mono version and then I'll show you how um, this product is in stereo. I've also, on top of double tracking or double sampling it for this product, I've sampled it through my two favorite Big Sky Reverb uh, presets and they're 100% wet so you can have um, as much or as little of the actual Big Sky Reverb as you want. Um, um, just for an added kind of tone, um, but like I said, it's been sampled completely dry, so you don't have to have that. You can put your own reverbs on it. So one benefit of having a sampled reverb is the CPU load is a lot, lot less than if you're going to chuck in a convolution or algorithmic reverb. Um, so it works great for live use. Um, you can have it at low latency with a bunch of patches all stacked together and it's not going to tax um, your CPU load. Another benefit of having a sample reverb um, is you have independent control over it. So you could even have it velocity sensitive. So when you're playing quiet, it could be just the reverb. And then as you build up and play louder, then 
um, the dry signal comes through or vice versa. You could have it so when you play lightly, you're only hearing the dry version. Then when you start playing louder, um, you have the sampled reverb coming in. So there's a lot of different options. Um, and I'm going on and on and you'll probably like, hurry up, get onto the sound. So let's do this. Okay, so here's a quick comparison uh, between the real Prophet 5 sitting next to me and the sample version of the same patch. So here we go. Um, this is a Prophet 5 first and then I'll do uh, the sample. As you can hear, they sound pretty much exactly the same. So what we have the added bonus of is having the Prophet 5 in stereo because I've double sampled it. So I'm going to do a quick AB between the sample and the Prophet 5, but this time you're going to hear the sample in stereo. So there you go. Um, on top of that, we've got um, the Big Sky um, versions. You've got a Cloud and Shimmer. Those are my two favorite. The Shimmer is an octave version, um, and the Cloud is just um, a normal Cloud Big Sky version. Uh, so I'll just quickly play you that as well. So as you can hear, you can blend in as much or as little of those two Big Sky um, samples as well. Um, I'll do a quick second comparison, one with the filter open right up. Um, I'll do the same as I did before. Let's go uh, mono version of the sample, um, no uh, reverb, and I'm just going to turn the cutoff frequency all the way up on the profit so you get a good AB. Okay, so here we go, um, sample first and then Real Profit 5. So I think the Profit 5 was a little louder in that example, but you get the general idea. Now I'll just do the full version um, of the sample with left and right um, without reverb. Um, the release time is a little bit different between the two, but you get the general idea um, of how this li library sounds compared to the real thing. Um, okay, let's go through some other patches and show you some of the features of this product. Um, so I quickly showed you the basic warm and bright, um, but what I really want to uh, show you is this vintage uh, knob. Um, which I've got mapped to, that's not the one, <laughs> this one here. Um, and what this is doing is giving you random pitch variation, which kind of simulates a vintage knob on the Prophet 5, um, just to make it even more analog sounding. So I'll show you it dry and then turn it up and show you kind of how it gives you that analog chorus vibe. So it's subtle, but it's just giving you some random pitch variation um, to make it sound even more analog. And that's for every single patch. Um, even the contact version has that vintage knob uh, feature in it. So you can make it really wavy, chorusy, um, or you can have it really solid um, and uh, non-pitchy, I guess. And not a great way of explaining it, but you get what I'm um, going at. So let's go down to the Oceans pad. So you may or may not know that the main pad from Oceans is actually a Prophet 5 sample. It was from Omnisphere, but the Omnisphere patch was created from a Prophet 5 sample. So I decided to do a full blown sample of this Prophet 5 um, sound. Um, the way they actually created it was a Prophet 5 through uh, Roland Dimension D. So I put the same effect on it here and I created a full uh, playable version of the original Oceans pad. So here we go. So 
So yeah, that's the ocean's pad sound. And obviously you've got control over cutoff frequency, resonance, um, with all these different um, knobs here. But mainly I use the cutoff frequency and the vintage knob. Um, that's kind of the two things that I muck around with um, when I'm using them. Some of my favorite pads in this library are the motion pads. Um, so I've done a bunch of different versions. Um, I've got natural sounding versions um, and EQ versions as well. Um, the EQ version, um, you can see I've added a lot more top end, taken out some of the mud. Um, just to bring out the sweep in it a bit more. The filter sweep you'll hear, it's just nice, slow filter sweep. Um, and then I've done different versions. Uh, C has a square wave added to um, the sine and the saw wave. B has the vintage knob cranked a bit more, so it's kind of panning from left to right um, when you combine the two sampled versions together. But I'll just quickly show you, let's show you just the B EQ so you get a vibe of what this kind of pad sounds like. Um, so let's move to the All Waves patch. Basically what this one is, is um, a combination of the saw wave, the sine wave, the square wave, um, all together in one, it, along with all the reverbs that are sampled with it. So it's quite a big patch, as you can see. Um, but the good thing about this one is you have um, control over all the different waveforms. So you can create your own kind of patch from it if you wanted to. Um, and it sounds especially um, good when you crank the vintage knob as well because um, it's all independently, um, randomly pitch shifting each individual patch. So I'll start it off just playing with no vintage knob, then turn it up uh, and show you kind of what it sounds like. So a lot of flexibility with that patch um, with uh, the control over all the different uh, waveforms. Um, let's go down to some of my favorite patches. This is definitely my favorite patch. I've sampled, or more correctly, I've captured the, um, the filter sweep from the Prophet 5. So it's got a lot of resonance on it, um, and I just love this patch. So let's um, do an audio example of this one. Absolutely love that patch. Um, the raw grit of the Prophet 5 is really captured in that patch with the filter sweep with all the resonance in it. And then you've got real time control over all these features with the cutoff resonance, vintage uh, knob and everything else. Um, I'll play a couple more um, and then leave it at that. So let's go to a lead sound, a vibe lead. Um, this one I really like too.
And here's another lead sound. It's a plucky lead with um, some delay and stuff added to it as well. A Rhodes and a Whirly are very similar. They come from the kind of same family of instruments. Um, a Whirly is a little bit more aggressive, but this is a Prophet 5 Whirly sound. I'll show it to you dry first, um, and then show you what you can do when you crank the vintage knob and add the reverb. Um, you have it really nice and dry like a real Whirly, but then really kind of dreamy and uh, chorusy um, by pushing, like I said, the vintage knob and the reverb up. So here we go. So to finish off with, I want to show you how to create one of my favorite um, synth sounds from one of my favorite albums, uh, Radiohead, Kid A, Everything That's Right Place. Um, so let's do that and I'll play through the song. Hopefully I can remember exactly how it goes. So here we go. Um, let's take the decay and sustain down. Attack, I think it's right where it is. Let me see. That's a vintage knob. We'll probably actually turn that up. Give it a bit more vintage goodness vibe. That's good. Okay. Okay, let's do this. So there you go, that's just a rough rendition of everything that's right place. I hope I did it justice, but you can see um, kind of the tone of this library and what you can uh, craft with it. Um, like I said, all the audio examples are up on multi-tracks. Um, so if you want to check out the ones I skipped over, um, there'll be a link in the description to this video to the product. So yeah, once again, thanks for watching.